Hello and welcome to another TLC tutoring accounting video. In this video, we are going to be going over how to calculate the price of a bond, specifically using the present value of a dollar formula. Now you may have learned that there's many different ways to calculate the price of a bond. Uh, you could use calculators, you could use Excel, formulas, time value of money tables. Um, in this one in particular, we are going to be using a formula. So let's take a look at the specific bond that we are going to be calculating the price for. We have XYZ Corporation that is issuing $10,000, so $10,000, uh, 9% three-year bonds. Uh, those bonds pay interest annually, so once a year. At the time of issuance, the rate for similar bonds on the market were 12%. So let's go over a few of these key things. Uh, for bonds, you'll notice that a lot of times they are listed in increments of 1,000. So 10 $1,000 bonds simply means that we are issuing $10,000 face bonds. Um, this 9%, this is known as the coupon rate or the contract rate or also known as the stated rate. This is basically going to tell us how much interest the bond is actually going to pay. Three year is the term. You'll also notice down here that the rate for similar bonds on the market is 12%. So let's talk about the difference between this 9% contract rate and the 12% market rate. Uh, so bonds that have the similar risk uh, on the market are currently 12%. So let's analyze this a little bit from the perspective of an investor. Um, if someone has a bond that pays 9% interest and someone else has a bond that pays 12% interest, uh, which bond would be more attractive for, attractive for an investor? It would be that 12%. They would want to maximize their return. So in this case, being XYZ Corporation, when we issue a bond that pays interest that is less than the market rate, well, then we're going to have to issue this bond at a discount. So what a discount means is that we're going to have to issue the bond at a price that is below face value. So we just discussed that the face value of this bond is $10,000. We won't be getting $10,000 for this bond. We'll ha be getting a little bit less than 10,000. And that's simply because of the difference between these two percentages. So let's take a look at how this might look when we're using the formula in particular. So the main formula that we are going to use is the present value of a dollar formula. That formula is present value equals future value divided by one plus the market rate to the power of n. So when we're analyzing this bond, I want you to keep in mind that the future value are all of the future cash flows that are going to be paid in this case, since we are the one issuing the bond. And the one plus the MR is our market rate to the power of n, that's our number of periods. So let's start by analyzing the term. We have three years here. One, two, three years. Now for each of these three years, we are going to have to pay interest since we are issuing a bond. So if we pay interest, we are going to pay interest according to that contract rate. So if it's a $10,000 face and a 9% rate and it's annually, so that 9% is for a full year, we don't have to adjust it for the time. That means in year one, we are going to be paying interest of $900. Year two, we're also going to be paying $900 in interest. Now year three, keep in mind this is cash flows. So we pay 900 year one, 900 year two, year three. Yes, we're paying 900, but in year three, we don't only have to pay the year three interest. We also have to pay back the face of the bond. So at the end of the years, we are paying the $10,000 face back plus the $900 in interest. So that means our total cash flow, that future value for year three is 10,900. So let's repeat that one more time. The cash flows or the future values of this bond is $900 interest year one, $900 interest year two, and then 10,900 total in year three. That's the interest plus us paying back the face of that bond. Now for the denominator, we're going to be using one plus the market rate, so 12% to the power of N. So let's go through that first one. One plus the market rate, so one plus 
And we are going to be doing that to the power of how many periods is it away from today? In this case, one. So let's talk about that a little bit because that tends to confuse people sometimes. Um, when we're analyzing this to the power of one, we're talking about how many periods it is away from today. So if we're making this $900 payment after one year, it's one year from today. We can do the same type of analysis in year two, 1.09, oops, sorry, 1.12, market rate is 1.12, to the power of two. And we can do the same thing also for year three. 1.12 to the power of three. Since this 10,900, we're going to have to pay three years from today, three periods from today. Once we have our formulas all laid out, then we go about finding the present value of each cash flow. So year one, our cash flow was $900, and we divided that by 1.12 to the power of one, since that $900 is to be received one year from today. So you'll notice that that gives us a present value that's significantly less than the face, or sorry, not the face, the cash flow that we were talking about for this individual period. Your present value should always be less than that future cash flow, and that's because of those rates. Um, essentially what this $803 is saying is that if I put this in an account at 12%, then in one year I should have $900. We can analyze year two the same way. $900 divided by 1.12 to the power of two years now, $717.47. And the same kind of thing as what we were just analyzing before. If I took $717.47 and put it in an account and left it in there for two years at 12%, and if it compounded annually, I'd have $900 at the end of the, those two years. So let's do the same thing for number three and see how much we would have to put in an account today in order to have $10,900 at the end of three years. We would need $7,758.40 in order to have that $10,900 at the end of three years. So all that we're really doing here is finding the present values of each individual cash flow. The present value of the interest payment year one, interest payment year two, and then the interest payment and in paying back the bond in year three. Now the last thing you're going to need to do is find the sum of those present values. So 803 plus 57, $717.47, and $7,758.40. That means that the price of this bond is $9,279.45. So let's kind of recap what we learned at the beginning and tie it together with what we learned with that cash price. So we know that the face amount of this bond was $10,000 and it paid 9% interest. However, similar bonds on the market paid 12%, which is better than our bond, which means that we're not going to be able to issue our bond at 10,000 we are going to have to issue it at a discount. So it's going to be a little bit less than the 10,000. Here it is, a little bit less than that 10,000. We're only going to be getting $9,279.45 because our bond's interest rate, that coupon rate, that stated rate, that contract rate is not as good as the market. Therefore, the cash we receive for the bond is less than that face amount. All right, keep practicing those present value formulas. I'll see if we could go ahead and upload a couple more that'll give us some more details on what is going on with these bonds. Maybe we'll do a few that show the scenario of semi-annual interest and how that would really work into the equation. But in the meantime, keep practicing. Do as many of these as you can because time value of money can be extremely interesting. And until next time, happy studying.